Okay, here's a little recap, things we know about congruent figures. Congruent figures are the same size and shape. All of the corresponding sides and angles are going to be congruent, okay? And then our congruence um, transformations are going to be these three, translations, reflections, rotations. All of those, the pre-image and the image, so the, the beginning uh, where you start and where you finish, your original image and the final one are going to be congruent, okay? Um, and then we have similar figures. Similar figures are figures that are the same shape but different sizes, okay? So the only um, transformation that we have that is going to change the size down here, the similarity of transformation, that's going to be um, a dilation where we're either enlarging or shrinking or reducing, I should say. Okay. Um, in, if you have um, figures that are different sizes, you can think of having like a, a little equilateral triangle and a big one. They're going to be similar. They're going to be the same shape but different sizes. The angles, though, are going to be congruent. Okay, the, the sides are not going to be congruent, but they are going to be in proportion. Okay, so if you're, for example, if you're tripling the size of a triangle, that means all of the sides are going to be tripled, all of the side lengths, so that the sides are in proportion. Okay, all right. Um, first off, the similarity ratio is the same as the side ratio or the scale factor. And so a, a ratio is a comparison of two numbers. So all you have to do to find um, a similarity ratio or side ratio or scale factor um, is, uh, is find two matching sides. So in this uh, example here, sorry, let me zoom in a little further there. In this example, um, we're um, going to figure out first off if these sides are similar. Um, and then we'll find the similarity ratio. Okay. Um, so looking at the angles I can see that all of the angles are from one figure to the next are congruent so every angle has a corresponding angle that's congruent okay um, and then the sides are obviously not congruent but I want to check if they're in proportion okay so looking at the um, smallest sides on each figure that's the six and the three if I compare those as a ratio I could do six over three or three over six it doesn't really matter Okay, so I went from the smaller one to the bigger one. So I'm going to see if that's in the same proportion. There's my second biggest on that one, my second biggest here, or my second smallest, I should say. Um, so then I want to compare 3.5 to 7. Okay, next up would be the 5 and the 10. And then the 6 and the 12 are the biggest sides on each triangle. And my question really is, are, these, um, are all of these fractions equal? Okay, so are the sides in proportion? Well, if you reduce all of these, it's a little harder to reduce 3.5 over 7, but you could multiply by 10 over 10 to get 35 over 70, and then it would reduce to 1 half, and 3.5 is half of 7, so you could probably eyeball that. Okay, all of those are equivalent to 1 half. You could also put them all in a calculator and look at their... Um, decimal um, at the, the decimal versions and they'd all come out to 0.5 so they are all in proportion so my answer here is yes because all of the side the uh, angles are congruent and all the sides are in proportion okay if so what is the similarity ratio so the similarity ratio I just choose any two of the sides like the three and the six and reduce it and it doesn't matter which one I choose right I'm gonna end up with one to two when I'm comparing this now I went from the small one to the big one but this particular problem doesn't say go from the small one to the big one or the big one to the small one. Sometimes you'll see problems where it says go from the green triangle to the blue one or whatever. Um, this one I could go either direction. So you could also write that ratio as two to one. Um, I could go from the big one to the small one. Okay. If the figures are similar, which they are, write a similarity statement. So this is going to be very, um, it's pretty much the same thing as a, um, as a, as a congruence statement. Um, so I'm going to call the first figure figure A, B, C, D. Just listing the, uh, the vertices. Okay. The symbol for similarity is like this. It's a little squiggly. It doesn't have the equal sign under it like it would if it was congruency, but it's the, just that same little squiggly sign. Okay. So that means figure A, B, C, D is going to be similar to the other figure. Now, there's one thing I have to be careful about here. It's the same kind of deal with congruence statements. 
I got to make sure that A, since I put A in the first slot, that I have the matching piece over here. And I can see A matches up with E, right? And then B was my second slot, so I need to have that match up with F. So, um, and then it's going to go around, right? So it's going to be E, F, G, H. But what I was trying to get at here is you have to, you can name a, B, this figure any order of those, but then you've got to make sure that you have the other figure set up in the same way that, so that you have the congruent angles in the same slots. Okay, and I do here, so here's my similarity st statement. Okay. All right, moving on to the next page. All right, next up, are these figures similar? So they definitely look like they're different sizes. Um, so let's check it out though. Keep in mind, they could be turned, right? They could be rotated from each other. So I could turn this one on its side. So don't just glance at it and say no because they kind of look different shapes. Think about turning that on its side, okay? Um, so what I want to do, I, I, all of the angles are 90 degrees. So I know all of the angles are congruent, but I still want to check um, if the sides are in proportion, okay? So I'm going to take the smaller, this is the smaller side in this rectangle, right? And this is the larger one. Over here, this one's the small one, and this one's the large one. So I'm going to take the small, um, the small side from the smaller rectangle, compare that to the small side from the larger rectangle. And then I'm going to compare my two largest. So I'm going 12 to 14. And my question is, are these congruent. So are these sides in proportion? Well, let's reduce them both. And now that they're reduced, I can see they're not, right? So my answer here is going to be no. They're not similar because the sides aren't in proportion, okay? You could also look at the decimal um, the decimal equivalents of these fractions to see if you wanted to plug it into a calculator. You could also cross multiply. The cross products, if the fractions are equal, then the cross products would be equal. And these are not going to be equal because you get 140 and 144. So then you can test that the fractions aren't equivalent. Okay. All right. That brings us to this, solving for x. This is a proportion, right? I've got two fractions that are equivalent. And that means that their cross products will be equal. There are different ways to solve this, but I think this is the easiest way. Okay. So then I've got 9 times 3 is going to be equal to to uh, 2 times the quantity x plus 2. Make sure you put that x plus 2 in parentheses. It's not just 2x plus 2 without parentheses because we're going to have to distribute that 2 over there. Okay. So on the left side I have 27. Right side that's going to be 2x plus 4 after I distribute. Okay. Then I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. Okay. And divide by 2. All right, and so it's not going to come out to an integer, so you could leave it as 23 halves, or that would be 11.5. Okay, then our last problem, um, we're going to solve for x here. So here we're told that these two triangles are similar. I can see that right there. Okay, that's great. So I know all the side, the angles are going to be congruent, right? So those third angles should be congruent. Um, but all the sides are going to be in proportion, and that's what's more useful here, okay? So I want to make sure that I know what this corresponds to. So it's a little bit hard to tell sometimes just looking at the side lengths to see, oh, what's your smallest side? I'm not really sure, and this might not be um, to scale either. Um, but what I can do is look at the placement of that side. It's between the one dash and the right angle. So between the one dash and the right angle over here, I know those are going to be corresponding um, sides. So I can say x minus 2 is to 21 as 18 is to 27. Okay, and there's a proportion. Some people might say x minus 2 is to 18 as 21 is to 27. That works too. There's a lot of different versions of this um, proportion that will work. So you could have the whole proportion flipped upside down, for example. I could have gone from the right triangle to the left one. Um, as long as using these four... Um, those four side lengths, as long as the x minus 2 is diagonal from the 27, we're going to end up with the same cross products. Okay, So you could cross multiply like this if you like, and that will definitely work. 
But I'm also noticing that I could reduce this fraction. So I'm just deciding, oh, 9 goes into 18 and 27. I might as well just reduce that so I have smaller numbers to work with. So that'll give me 2 thirds over there. And now I'm going to cross multiply. But if you didn't reduce, that's fine. You should get to the same result in the end. So 2 times 21 is going to equal 3 times the quantity x minus 2. Make sure you use parentheses again there. Okay. So I'm distributing here. On the left, I have 42. Okay. Now I'll add 6 to both sides. And divide by 3. And x is going to come out to 16. Okay. And that is it for today, and I'll see you next time.